needs are. First thing we're going to do, like every fly, is lay down a, a layer of silk, and that's going to form the foundation for, for everything. Um, I like to tie with uh, uh, Danville's tying thread. Um, I just find it nice and flat, non-bulky. It's not the strongest stuff in the world, um, so one does have to be you know, careful that you don't nip uh, the barb or the point of the hook or something like that. First thing we'll do is tie in the tail. Uh, normal Cock de Leon feather. And like I said earlier, this has just got the most amazing speckling. Um, I just really like this material. I use it for my nymphs, for legs and tails. Um, now the trick to do, over, to do here is to pull the feathers down the spine, or the, 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 the barbels down the spine of the feather, until you get the points kind of even over there and then grab them together and just take it off take it off the spine of the feather and what I find useful is I cut I just trim that back bit off where they're all stuck together and that just kind of releases the feathers at the back and that'll keep the points sort of uniform now the spinners if you look at them when they lie in the water and they're, they're quite hard to to see um, so when you see cloud, the clouds of insects um, in the late evening and you start to see the fish working and you're battling to see any up-winged up insects, you can be pretty sure that they're eating those flash-winged um, spinners. And you'll often see the, um, the, the rise as a telltale as well. You'll often see fish just, just dimpling. And you'd swear it's just a little sort of five-inch fish. It can be a massive fish. They just sit just under the surface and just open their, they just open, raise their snouts up and open their mouths and just take them in as they, as they come down. But you'll notice with the insects, they do have quite long tails. So I do like to tie the, the, the pattern with a, with a longish tail using a pinch loop uh, technique that I'm sure you all are familiar with. That'll give us a good stabilizer at the back as well. You can put a ribbon on this pattern. I don't. I just don't see, um, unless the particular mayfly species that you're um, trying to imitate or spinner that you're trying to imitate has a, a very segmented body. I've just found that the general shade of the, of the color is, is good enough. We'll just form a, a thin dubbing noodle that we're going to use um, to create the abdomen of this fly. Okay, I want to get uh, to a point about a little under two-thirds of the way up that hook shank. If you can imagine the point where the tail starts and the eye of the hook, so a little more than the halfway point is where we're going to put the wing in. Um, and you've got to be careful that you don't overcrowd that area and tie the wing too close to the eye of the hook. It looks a little weird at first that you're tying it in there, but once uh, you tie in the head and tie in the thorax, the proportions should, should work themselves out. Now here's the important uh, stuff is the material. And there are lots of, of, um, lots of spinner patterns that have, that have used uh, lots of different wing material um, over the years. I have just find that uh, Roger was talking about the Puglisi uh, um, fiber. Uh, it's very similar to, to the stuff here, that the sculpting fiber that um, Fishient and Cliff Rochester uh, provides um, locally. 
Um, the key thing with this is we don't want to get. You guys want to come in closer? So have a look and. Yeah. Yeah. So we just put the material in front of the, just in front of the. Yeah, I'm sorry the, about that. Yeah. No, 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 just when you're showing the glass. Thank you. Okay, it's sculpting fiber. Um, and I suppose um, you're going to take a, a piece. About a match, about a, if you if you pull it and compress it, about a, about as thick as a match, right? And I like to just take those ends off there, and then just pull all the loose bits out. Now, don't cut this short. Keep this keep this piece long like that. It's just much easier to work with uh, once we get around the rest of the fly. What we do here is a simple figure of eight, just to lock that down. Now, what I've found is if you leave the spinner wings like that, um, especially in the bigger sizes, the wings are prone to, to, to flap around a little bit. So what's useful is to, is to actually, in the same way that when you're tying a parachute dry, you, 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 you create a, a small thread post at the base of the, of the, of the post of the parachute. We're, we're going to do the same on either side of, those, uh, of these two wings over here. It's a, bit, it's a little awkward. Those will just keep the, the wings out proud. Can you turn it uh, 90 degrees just so we can see it or not? That way? Yeah. yeah. And then just tilt it forward as well. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks, sir. I'll take the thread back to where we finished that, uh, that abdomen. You wet your fingers and just pull this back. You can keep them kind of out of the way. And now what we'll do is using the same fine and dry, dry fly dubbing, is just build up a, a thorax. Follow the same figure of eight route that we were doing earlier on to tie those wings in firmly. You don't need to apply any huge amount of pressure. No super glue, eh, Tom? No super glue. Just finish the head off. You can see that by positioning that those wings at, at just past that halfway mark, at that sort of 65% mark, um, you end up leaving yourself the right amount of space to to finish the fly off. Okay. Now we come to the important part, the wings. 
flatten those wings out. Now we're going to trim them and we're going to cut them at a very particular angle. I want to cut those wings from the outside in and from the outside in so that the wings are shortest on the tail end of the thorax and longest on the, on the, on the hook eye end. All right, to give it the profile and the footprint that I'm looking for. And remember that the wings on this pattern are oversized. The wings on a spinner, when you see them on the water, look way bigger than, than, than the body. So don't, this is like, like, like trimming this side of your head and then that side. Don't go too short to start with. Go a little bit, little bit, little bit. Can you, can you move it back slightly? You good there? Okay. Can everyone see? So we'll start on the outside over here, and I can I can always trim these in. So so. And I make my first cut there. Yeah. So. It's going in at about 45 degrees, and the, 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 the net effect is that we have the wings are shorter over there, tapering out, and then that longish, slightly flattish look across the front. We can just trim off any of the, the bits here that... Everyone see that? Uh, see that shape? Okay. Now that shape, that I think is is very important. It's a very important part of of this fly, is that shape, um, because when you see the fly and look at it from underneath with that shape, that that very angular footprint that the spinner pattern has on the or the spinner the, the mayfly spinner has on the water, is is almost perfectly replicated with that. And I find that this the sculpting fiber, or the Piglisi fiber as well, um, I think also refracts and reflects a lot of light, um, which is exactly what those, what those um, very clear spinner wings do. And if you look at the spinner wings on the natural, they have the veins, the black veins that go through that will also reflect and reflect the, uh, refract the light. Um, and I think that th that that this this material does does an amazing job uh, at doing just that. And it doesn't. I guess it doesn't get waterlogged either. It does not get waterlogged. You lift it up and literally do that, and it's shaken the water out of it. It floats like cork. Um, you you. I mean, the well. I've 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 happily um, yeah. suspended little um, unweighted pheasantail nymphs and hazier nymphs and things underneath um, larger larger spinners. And I can tell you guys that if you're looking for a fly that moves fish, fish that are that are indifferent and um, and not particularly interested in what you're throwing at them. Chuck them a spinner pattern. Chuck them this spinner pattern, and see what happens.